Hello everybody, it is Galrock, and today I thought we'd do something a little different. I want to do a getting started with Batania. Um, it's been through a lot of updates lately. This is on, you can see on the back of the Lexica Batania there, build 226. So, first things first, how do you make a Lexica Batania? Well, a book with any sapling gets you the Lexica Batania. You open it. You get the Welcome to Batania. Pretty cool to read. Uh, really, everything in here is really cool to read. So, if you haven't read it, I recommend going through it. Now, there's some tabs on the side here. Challenges. You can click on one of these challenges and mark them completed if you've completed them. It's kind of an extended achievement system for Batania. and then you can click the achievements button go straight to the achievements also so yeah you've got the regular achievements that work just like any achievement in minecraft and you've got the challenges so those are some fun things to work with you can also go to Batania options those are the configuration options right there you can also find that in the config file and then all the information about Batania. Basics and Mechanics is a good place to start. And Mystical Flowers. Well, we see lots of those. I forgot to give myself some shears to show you something. Alright. <laughs> anyway. First thing you'll notice when you log into a regular world, not a super flat empty world the way I created this one is you will find flowers everywhere. You will find the short flowers, you will find the tall flowers. Well, the short flowers, you can just be in something other than creative mode. There we go. And you can just pick them up. Just hit them, pick them up, no problem and a regular flower you crafted in the crafting grid you get two petals from it these tall flowers however you can hit them don't get anything you need shears to collect these but the tall flowers will give you four petals now one cool thing when you're running around doing all kinds of stuff just a few pieces of wool with any mystical petal you can make yourself a flower pouch. Give me. Now, what the flower pouch does for you? Go through and collect flowers. And it is a bag for you to keep the flowers in. So instead of filling up your inventory with flowers, especially if you're not working with another mod, you know what? I haven't tried the flower pouch with the tall flowers. I don't think those will work, will they? Nope. Oh well. Anyway, it gives you a bag for collecting the regular flowers. Makes it a whole lot easier, uh, you know, instead of filling your inventory, because there, there's one flower for each of the 16 colors. So that's uh, that'll fill up your inventory real quick while you're out there hunting around. So let me just do this. There we go. Clean this up a little bit, and we will look at the next thing: the petal apothecary. For the petal apothecary, simple recipe: just a few cobblestone, couple of slabs with any one of the mystical petals gives you the petal apothecary and I cannot type there we go actually yeah it's in creative plus okay sun setting let's keep some daylight around here okay the petal apothecary this is your first crafting mechanic in Batania so what you'll do with that fill it with water and the first flower you always want to make is pure daisy now you can find recipes one of two ways 
right clicking by the way will bring you back to where you were before or you can use the back arrow down there but we're going to look at basic sim mechanics pure daisy that's always the first one we want this for creating living wood living rock so the petal apothecary fill it with water throw in your petals shift right click if you want to take them out and we also need seeds there we go so we've got four white petals in there also by the way another way to look up your uh, recipes we're working on the pure daisy right now you can look them up in any eye and it shows you it's in a petal apothecary throw in four mystical white petals now what the any eye doesn't tell you is to complete any petal apothecary recipe gotta throw a seed in there and that gets you that flower you were crafting so the pure daisy is an important first step we're gonna place we're gonna actually place a couple of these we want some smooth stone and we want some wood logs any of them will work um, I have seen occasionally some of the mod logs require you to place them like that instead of like that the oak logs however will work either way and you can place these items down however you want around this pure daisy you can see the little particle effect showing that it's working so we're gonna give this a minute and it only takes about a minute but we're gonna give this a minute and I'll be back as it is shifting into living rock and living wood alright there we go you can see everything is starting to transform for us of course I am on creative mode so I don't know why I bothered to grab myself an axe and a pickaxe but anyway you've got living rock you've got living wood okay we can break all this down now and now what are you gonna do with those well first thing I suppose you want to do with the living wood there's a few things of course there are decorative blocks you can craft mana spreaders which you can see take six living wood one gold and any one of the mystical petals all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff but the first thing you usually want to make once you get to this point is the wand of the forest and you can use any color petals with three living wood twigs living wood twigs are just two pieces of living wood in the crafting grid like so and of course you can see the color of petals that you use renders that color when you hold the wand in your hand I just used a pair of black now this is kind of the wrench for Batania think of Batania as mystical technology that's kind of the way this mod works out so think of the wand as your wrench so what are we gonna do with that wand well first we need to generate mana the easiest way best way to start generating mana is the day bloom you got two mystical yellow petals one orange and one light blue and the petal apothecary again with the seed to create the day bloom now this will generate mana from daylight it does have a counterpart called the nightshade now if you notice put these two right next to each other like this and you get that little line particle effect that's because two day blooms right next to each other like that will not work very efficiently you kinda wanna checkerboard them whoops there I go you wanna checkerboard them like that now you can see with the wand a couple of pieces of information one is that these are gaining mana that's what that indicator bar is I'm not sure how well that's showing through on the video but there's a little yellow line on that bar that is climbing as we look at it 
you'll also notice that it's got a picture of a mana spreader with an X. That means these flowers are not bound to any mana spreader. So we're going to want to put down a mana spreader. And they're still not bound. Well, we're going to shift right click in the air with our wand of the forest. And we want to change it into bind mode. So what we'll do with that, shift right click on a day bloom and on the mana spreader. Now we've got a green check showing that it is bound to a mana spreader. You don't always have to do this if you have a mana spreader down before you put your flowers down. It should automatically bind the flower to the closest mana spreader. Now the mana spreader obviously spreads mana. Wow, imagine that. And you can see it slowly but surely building mana in there from the daylight producing mana through the day blooms for us. And while you're holding, you don't see that particle effect without your wand of the forest. While you're holding your wand of the forest, you see that particle effect showing the direction that it will shoot the mana. You've also got this little spot here. This is the spot at which it starts to lose efficiency. Basically, the further you shoot mana, the more loss you'll get. Basically it will start, the beam will start to fade as it gets beyond this point right here. So you know you could use, if you need to transfer it further, you can use an alternate method which hopefully we'll have a chance to get into some of those or just link up another spreader or another pool, anything before that point if you don't want to suffer from the mana loss. Now we need somewhere to store the mana, right? Well, we need a mana pool. The diluted mana pool is the one that you have to make. You make that just five living rock and a crafting grid like so. And you want a regular mana pool. Well, that takes throwing a diluted mana pool into a mana pool that has some mana in there. So let's put that down mana shoots in there you see we've got a green check mark now indicating we can do that so now we just do that and we can put down a regular mana pool holds a lot more mana than the diluted mana pool and I think the diluted mana pool is only useful for crafting a regular mana pool so you want to get that done as quick as you can now one thing you might find in a dungeon chest as you're out running around is Black Lotus. Now, the Black Lotus, you can look it up in the Lexica Batania. There it is right there. It's not craftable. It's only found in ancient dungeons. What it does is contains mana. Throw it in there and it adds mana into the mana pool. Eh, not, you know, a whole lot, but still, free mana is free mana, right? So we let the mana build up and it's going to do more things for us. For the purposes of this video though, we'll just use the creative mana pool. Creative mode only, no recipe for crafting it. The everlasting guilty pool. There's no crafting recipe. Running out of daylight. Uh, one more note about the day blooms, and this also counts for nightshades and hydrangeas. Those are the three passive mana generating flowers. The nightshade, like I was telling you a, while, uh, a few minutes ago, is the counterpart to the day bloom. This is the recipe for it, just as easy as the day bloom to make, and it generates its mana from the power of the night, the moon, instead of daylight. So that's all it is, is counterpart to the day bloom. And then the uh, hydroangia. It's a little bit more difficult to make. Requires a couple of mana petals, which you gain by throwing those mystical petals into a mana pool with some mana. Matter of fact, let's do this. Demonstrate that real quick we've got a mystical petal just throw it into the mana pool and it turns into a mana petal now the hydroangia as its name might imply generates mana from water there are a 
couple of ways you can work with it. The first one, obviously, is to put yourself an unlimited water source next to where you're going to put your hydrangea. If we look at that with the wand, see it automatically bound to the nearest mana spreader. So let's... There we go. It will drink up the water if you don't have an infinite source. Let's do this. I want to unbind this for a minute. Uh, it rebound automatically. Oh well. Anyway, what I was going to try to show you, which not really that big a deal, the Hydrangea generates its mana from water, and that water does have to be on the same level and directly connected to the Hydrangea. So basically you want it in a corner like this. But it will also generate mana faster in the rain. Ooh, that weather is loud. Let me turn that down. There, that's better. There, much better. Now, it should be generating mana faster than it was before. It's hard to see because it, it still generates slowly either way you look at it, but it's still passive mana gen. Okay, I'm turning off the rain now. Now, passive flowers, the hydrangeas, the day bloom, the nightshade, uh, they only last a couple of Minecraft days. They will turn into a dead bush after that time and will no longer generate mana for you. They, they wither and decay. Those are the only flowers that do it, but, you know, that's important to note. Alright, so now we've got mana. What are we going to do with all this mana? Well, one thing we can do is... That's not what I wanted to look at. We can look at the Runic Altar. Uh, you need a Mana Diamond or a Mana Pearl. When you get those, this works just the same, either with an Ender Pearl or a Diamond. Just throw it in the Mana Pool. uses up a little bit of mana. gives you Mana Diamond. So that's all it takes to do that. Now the Runic Altar... is the next crafting me mechanic in Batania. Now we've already got this mana spreader pointing at the runic altar. Well, what if we had the runic altar over here instead? What are we going to do? Well, we've already got our wand of the forest in bind mode. Shift right click on the mana spreader. Shift right click on the runic altar. And it will re-aim the mana spreader for us. Now the runic altar is used for making runes, as you might imagine. And there are several different types of runes. You can look those up in any I like so. Again, all this information is also in the Lexica Batania. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make a rune of mana. The rune of mana requires five mana steel and a mana pearl. Well, we get mana, mana steel same way we get mana anything else. Drop some iron in the mana pool and there we go we've got mana steel. So what are we gonna do? We are going to put this stuff around the runic altar. Right click and there we go you can see the item floating. Well whoops what if I accidentally put the wrong item there. Shift right click goes back into your inventory. One two three four five and right click with your wand of the forest and you can see the mana is now getting shot from the mana pool to the runic altar we're also going to need some living rock for this and if you're holding your wand of the forest 
you see you don't get to see it without it. If you're holding the Wand of Force, though, you get to see an indicator bar. So we're going to let that sucker run. It's almost done. And also, even if you're not holding your Wand of the Forest, you get these little lightning effects when it's done. Throw your Living Rock on there. Right-click again with your Wand of the Forest, and you get your rune. And those runes are used in a lot of stuff. Um, for example, the Rune of Water, used in some of these pendants, rings, Rod of the Seas, which you can use for creating water. Let's see, a couple other things. Rod of the Depths creates cobblestone for you. Sparks, minolins. There's some flowers, the Narslemus, the Dandelion. There are lots of flowers that this is used for. So that is the second crafting mechanic from Batania, the Runic Altar. So give me just a minute and we will look at the next thing. Okay, and we're back. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that mana pools, vanilla redstone by the way, is very useful in Batania. Mana pools, you can see by the comparator, will emit a redstone signal based on how full they are. So you can see we've only got a little bit of mana in this mana pool so far and it's emitting just a little bit of a redstone signal only a power level of one as that sucker gets more full it will light up further down the line with a higher level of power now I've set up another mana spreader here because I want to show you what is usually the next generating flower the endo flame. If you look at the recipe for that, again, not too difficult. Just a few mystical petals and a couple of mana petals. So what you can do with the endo flame? Let's make sure that is bound correctly. It is. The endo flame will burn combustibles: wood, coal, charcoal. Let's throw a block of coal at it. You just drop the block of coal on it, and it goes like so. And now this mana spreader, and you can see that's producing faster than these passive generating flowers over here. So that's going to generate some more mana for us. And since we used a block of coal, that's going to work for quite some time. So we're just going to let that do its thing. Now there are, if you look in the Lexica Batania, under generating flora, there are a lot, or quite a few flowers that are available for generating for you. I recommend looking through them. Uh, find out what's going to work best for you. There's a lot of different flowers on here. The Entropenium, for example, works on exploding TNT. The Gormorillus eats food. The Munchdew eats leaves off of trees. The Narslimus eats slimes. Uh, the Rosa Arcana eats player XP. And the Thermalily eats lava. So those are some cool, cool flowers to check out. And at a later point in the game, you can get even more of them. But that's going to be for a future episode. This is just basics and getting started. Now, there are ways to move your mana around. Obviously, the first way, like we showed over here, is the mana spreader. Now, a lot of the machines that you'll use, like the Runic Altar, requires a mana spreader shooting into it, and there are later game mana spreaders that will work faster and better. Here's another way of transferring your mana around. I set up another Everlasting Guilty Pool over here, and we've got an empty mana pool here, and what we've put down is a mana pump. And it pumps from the blue side to the pink side. From the blue side to the pink side. And you can see we have a mine cart with mana pool. Oh, I've got one right there. All right. And, you know, that's shapeless crafting, just a mine cart and a mana pool in your crafting grid. So what I'm going to do is shove that mine cart over there. And you can see how quickly this pump is filling that mana pool up. I mean, that is quick. Now we're going to send it back. And 
and watch these light up. Look at how fast that sucker's filling up. Pretty nice, huh? Now I will leave it to your imagination again. Whoops. I want you here. There we go. These will also emit a redstone signal based on how full they are. Or they should. No, I guess they don't. I was mistaken. I'm sorry to have uh, misinformed you. But there are ways to make use of redstone. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> there are ways to make use of redstone to automate the moving of this mana cart back and forth. Is this lit up to level 2 yet? Nope, not quite. Now there is one other way of moving mana around. Let's just throw a mana pool down randomly. The mana tablet. So we can take our wand in function mode and you can see the arrow going from a tablet to a pool or from a pool to a tablet. And we can use the mana pool to fill up our mana tablet. You know what? This might be better to demonstrate over here on a regular mana pool. Shift right click and there we go. The mana is going to start emptying into the mana tablet for us. And you can see now as the mana pool empties it's losing some of the redstone signal. I think that'll do for now. Very nearly full, if not completely. Yeah, nearly. Throw the mana tablet down here, and it's going to empty the mana tablet into this mana pool. Matter of fact, we could even put some of this mana in this pool over here. There we go. Lit up level 2 now. Level 3. Alright, that'll do. That'll do. Go back over there for me. And fill my mana tablet back up. Alright, now, what can we do with this mana? Well, some of the early game stuff we can do. There we go. Sojourner's Sash. Look at the recipe for that. Just a few leather, mana steel, rune of earth, rune of air. And, you know, those are, again, fairly simple to make on the runic altar. So what do you do with that? I need to be in my survival menu. Unless, yeah, there we go. I can access it like that by pressing B. It goes in the waste spot in your bobbles menu and with mana in your mana tablet you can see you run much faster jump higher get auto step up assist for one block like so. See that's more than a block tall but now I can jump on top of it. And you jump I th think it's two blocks. Let's see. Yeah. Whoops. But not three. So yeah, you can jump up two blocks when using Sojourner Sash. That is one of my favorite items. There are also mana steel tools and armor you can get early in the game. The mana steel armor. You wear it just like that, and when you get hit, instead of losing durability, it takes from your mana tablet. And in survival mode, you can see my armor bar now. Uh, you can see it's the same level of protection as iron, and it can enchant 
Actually, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. Mystical items. Mana steel equipment. There we go. There's all the recipes in there. Nothing crazy about them. And... Let's see. It doesn't say in the book. I thought it did. I believe... Ah, there it is, right there. Somewhat superior in enchantability and durability. So, the Man of Steel items can take enchants better than Iron Armor can, or any of the Man of Steel tools as well. And, again, you know, they will use up from your uh, Mana Tablet instead of using up from the tool's durability. And again, like the book says, they're more enchantable, so you know you can more easily put better enchants on your items just by infusing your iron with a little bit of mana. So I think that, well, you know what, let's look at a couple of the flowers. What are we going to do with the flowers? Well, there's a few things we can do with the flowers. Let's get ourselves a hoe. Maybe whoops. Wow. I'm just not there, am I? There we go. Alright. Maybe I should put water down first, huh? Alright. Three will do the trick for us. Let's plant some seeds. And we will put down another creative mana pool for this. Alright, not much going on. I mean, standard growth, weight, growth rate with the seeds, right? Well, we can look at the Agricarnation. Look at the recipe for that. A little more complicated. Redstone root, which grass and redstone put together makes redstone root. Um, and then the Rune of Spring, which actually requires a couple of other runes before you can make it. So there's a few steps in this process. But eventually, you get your Agricarnation. And you plant it next to your garden, like so. And it will use mana to apply growth tick, random growth ticks, to nearby plants. There we go. And you get a little sound effect from it as well. So that's one useful item. And let's see, what other flowers can you use in there? Functional flora, there we go. You can look through this list, there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, the exoflame, that's another good one. So let's put another mana pool down over here and take a look at the Exo Flame. And this one, Rune of Summer, Rune of Fire, and some petals. And let's plant it right there. Now, what's it going to do for us? Well, it's going to power a furnace. No coal necessary, just mana. Let's throw a stack of cobblestone in one, and there it goes. You can see it cooking up using the Exo Flame. And you can power more than one furnace at a time. It's just going to use mana accordingly. And it actually will function a little bit faster than just normal burning in a furnace does. So, you know, that's a pretty cool, useful option for it. And let's see what else. That's probably all we're going to cover today. There are some more really cool flowers. I highly recommend reading through the book, just getting a feel for it, playing with the mod, seeing what you can do with it. Because 
it's a really cool mod and I really enjoy playing with it. I'm sure you will too. But I think that's all the time we've got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me some suggestions in the comments below. If uh, you liked or didn't like something, feel free to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. I do Let's Plays where I try to do mostly a tutorial of my playing experience, you might say, how I'm making things work together and what I'm doing with it. So, uh, you know, I encourage you to check out my channel. I hope you enjoy my videos, and I hope you enjoyed watching today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this is Galrock.